thank Ed for hosting us here Thanks today. Ed Jamison is a member of our club. Um, before we start, my name is Marty Jones. I'm the president of FISNI. Do we have any uh, new members here today? My name is uh, Matt Payne. I'm actually, I've been here before. Yeah. But uh, I'm a very good friend of, where's John? There it is. I've known John for at least 10 to 15 years, and uh, George did a presentation at our club. But uh, George wanted me to come up here because I've been an avid amateur astronomer for over 20 years. So Great. hopefully it's an interesting presentation. This is my granddaughter, Ava Moviko, and here we enjoy the uh, lecture. Good. Um, show report, John Dockery, as I mentioned, we have two shows a year, so John's our show manager. Hi. Well, we have <laughs> show 71 coming up at the end of the month, the 25th and 26th. Where is it? It's in Wakefield, Massachusetts, lovely scenic Wakefield, Massachusetts. This is show 71, so more than likely you're familiar with it. But I'd like to pass out the brochure, or actually Here. some brochures, and also a volunteer sign-up sheet. Toas, the uh, program co-chairman, uh, wrapping up what we'll be, be covering over the next uh, next few meetings. Again, admissions for our May meeting is going to be devoted to military photography. Uh, Steve Jarecki will be coming back and giving us a wonderful tour on uh, the history of the history of military photography. Any, of course, we at our regular meet, at our usual meetings, we have a show and tell. If you have any military related stuff, uh, your photographic stuff, please bring it to, to talk about that. Again, collecting military is an important subdivision of, of camera collecting these days, as you know. So, I'd like to, as much as possible, make this a real, a real, a real a military day, and hopefully. Uh, I know there are some, you know, some things lurking in the collections of people that do, will be pretty interesting to, pretty interesting to see. It's time for show and tell, right? I don't know if people brought items today or not, but we'll let Al All do right. as usual, run the show and tell. So you, you arrived just in time, Al Holney. I missed a show, but I won't tell. Okay. Actually, I will this time. All right, I will begin on the left as we usually do. Anybody here? Uh, Paul. Okay. Hi. Oh, by the way, I'm Paul Nissel from Abington. This was on the famous auction site. And generally, I'll put in a bid and then I'll just let it go. And if it sells, fine. If it doesn't sell, if I get it, fine. If I don't get it, so what? But this time, I decided to follow my son's advice. It's called sniping. Yeah. Ah. The problem with sniping is you get carried away. <laughs> So I, I still didn't pay too much for this camera, but it's a rare camera. It was made in 1959. It's a Leica M1, and an M1 does not have a rangefinder. It does have frame lines for 35 millimeter and frame lines for 50 millimeter. It also has parallax compensation, but it does not have a rangefinder. I'm Ruth Tomasian from Watertown. I was looking at my bookshelf and I found two books on stargazing and I thought, well, you know, um, maybe I should uh, bring these for show and tell and then present them to our renowned host today because I probably won't use them and I'd rather have someone use them. This is, well, let me start with the oldest. This is a great book called Exploring Space with a Camera. It was published in 1968 by the National Aeronautics and Space Administration. And it's full of, you know, the Sputnik era type photos and all about gazing at the stars. Then about 25 years ago, the Nature Company put this book out. And of course, it's in color and quite a different type of book, but full of wonderful stargazing plates. So Ed, I give them to you for your personal library. Thank you, Marlington. Um, since we're in a planetarium, I thought I would put in a plug for our local astronomy club, since there's a club for everything. Um, <laughs> and not only that, that's where I first met Adrian many, many years ago with the Amateur Telescope Makers of Boston, and at Jameson also. Um, it's a, essentially a kind of a greater Boston area astronomy club. It's not the only one around. It's probably one of the bigger ones. We have monthly meetings at the Harvard Observatory in Cambridge and we have a clubhouse and observing site out in Westford. Um, 
where we have an old 1860s farmhouse that we lease from MIT for a dollar a year. But anyway, it's a very active club. It has about 300 members. Um, we do star parties for schools. We have observing sessions out there. We do telescope making. People actually grind mirrors and make their own telescopes. And so if anybody's interested in that, uh, you know, please talk to me and I can give you some information. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Ron Labby uh, from Maynard. And uh, I have a, a set of cameras that are run by Stereo Data Maker. I don't know if you've heard of this or if uh, Ralph Johnson has already shown a set, but uh, this is a really interesting uh, camera setup with the SD870s. And one is turned upside down so that the uh, lenses are very close together. In fact, they're 65 millimeters, which is just about perfect. And it has a huge three inch LCD screen on the back, so you can actually free view the pairs after you've shot them. Yeah. Well, I'm Francine Jackson, and I, um, actually, I'm one of the persons at the Lad Observatory. And this is an old antique building that was uh, made in, uh, in um, dedicated in 1891. And the important thing about it is that the main telescope, we've done everything, in fact, we've almost killed ourselves, to make sure that everything is still done as it was in 1891. The entire telescope is done manually. The, um, the clock drive has to, be, has to be wound up like a grandfather clock. It's actually weight driven, which uh, John, in fact, was very instrumental in getting them working again at one point. Well, that's because the telescope's quantity period is trying to be Oh, well, that's, <laughs> yes. Uh -huh. Yes, it's also haunted as well. These, but I was wondering if anyone knows anything about these, and maybe could give me a, you can talk to me about how, to, how it works and all of that. This is a, uh, made by the Simmon brothers, and it was called, uh, it's called a uh, Signal Core Camera Combat. And it's, uh, it takes two and a quarter, three and a quarter pack film. The front view, this is actually the viewfinder. It comes up, snaps in place, and then there's the peep sight in the back. And you hold it like this, and you have two squares in the sports finder. You have the big one for the 101 millimeter lens, and there's a 225 millimeter lens that this took. And it had a uh, pack film would go in here, two and a quarter, three and a quarter pack film went in here. And it had a unique device to cap off the light. You didn't have to put dark slides in because you push a button to, uh, to take the picture, and the button would actually there's a cap that comes up that blocks the the uh, that blocks the light from the lens, and it covers the lens when you're not taking the picture when you want to take. Okay, uh, well you all read the uh, newsletter and know a lot of uh, uh, the my, my history, uh, but you know my history. Uh, as far as uh, interest in the sky goes back to my uncle. When I was five years old, my uncle used to be a lobster fisherman, and I spent eight summers off the coast of Maine, and he taught me a lot of the stars, and uh, he could just look at the moon and tell uh, the, uh, what the tide was doing, and he could tell the time of the day or night just by looking where the moon was, and it was a really, really neat experience. Also, you know, I might have noticed my desktop's got a dolphin on there. I shot that picture this past May on a dolphin research ship, so, you know, I, I, I go to both places, and I actually go, I, I kind of mix the uh, two media, the sky and underneath, by being underwater during a total solar eclipse, watching the effect of the eclipse on fish life. So, you know, it's, it's all connected. Anytime my students, you know, and, uh, you know, like Dick Coolish said, there's a club for everything. I know John said the same thing. Why are we in so many clubs? I mean, if, if you list, uh, you know, Dick's the number of clubs, it's amazing. Uh, yeah, well, it, it really is. Uh, the, uh, right here, we have the planet analogs. Uh, this gearing system is an approximation. Uh, each of these is an analog of the Earth going around the sun, and this particular planet going around the, uh, you know, going around the, uh, me, the Earth. And